The 5G landscape stretches far and wide and there are many different aspects to examine from a technology, services, business and strategy perspective. So I'm very pleased to be talking today with Stefan Pongratz, Vice President at Deloro. He's responsible for the firm's mobile RAN market and telecom CapEx research programs. And for those not familiar with Deloro, it's a highly respected research firm often cited by major companies in the telecom sector, and its analysts cover a broad range of topics in the telecoms infrastructure, enterprise network infrastructure, and data infrastructure markets. Stefan, great to have you with us here today to talk about 5G. So let's get stuck into the topic. What are the key trends in the radio access network or RAN market? Is it growing due to 5G investments? Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, first of all. Uh, the, the market right now, it, it is growing. It's actually doing, I would say, exceptionally well. I mean, our, uh, our estimates suggest that this, basically this upswing that began in the, in the second half of 2018, uh, following the, the LTE pause that has kind of continued now and it extended into uh, 2020 and with a particularly strong second half in 2020. And uh, that's, uh, so for the full year, we, we had a, one of the strongest growth rates that we've seen in more than 10 years. We've tracked this market since the year 2000, and it was the, the RAN market or the radio access network market combining here 2G through 5G is, uh, is reaching new record levels. We had three consecutive years of growth. Um, and, uh, and even more encouraging is the fact that uh, even with that elevated baseline, because the reality is we've had fairly large deployments now, you know, three to four million uh, uh, radios, uh, very large uh, rollouts, uh, 5G rollouts in some parts of the world. But even with that elevated baseline, uh, we still believe that there's room to, to grow in, in, in going forward. There's more uh, room left in the tank. Yes, 5G for mobile broadband is a significant driver, uh, clearly. Uh, but even some of these new, uh, new opportunities, new capex from uh, fixed wireless access, pri private wireless, it's, it's starting to move above the noise. And, and uh, uh, so, so we expect that to gradually to improve as well. But for now, yeah, 5G, 5G for mobile broadband is a significant driver uh, for the overall RAN market. It's, it's, it's a good time to be in the RAN market right now. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Stefan. So uh, there seems to be something of an upheaval in the RAN market right now. Uh, what is driving that? Yeah, I mean, obviously the, the, the revenue trends are extremely encouraging and that's helpful. Uh, and of course, this in, intense uh, 5G rollout phase is, is, of, uh, is, is, is helping as well. But I think really what's, what's one of the reasons that we are more, I would say, up, more optimistic about the world today than we were, say, 10 years ago in the middle of the 3G to 4G uh, rollout is, is simply the fact that there's just, there's just a lot of activity, both on the supply and the demand side. I mean, if you just look at the some of the so there's a lot of parallel efforts basically happening in, in, in addition to this shift from 4G to 5G. So I see 5G is an important enabler, and it's a, but it's still just one piece of the puzzle. If you just look on the supply side, for example, I mean, there's the, the, just a sheer amount of the pace of change and the sheer amount of innovation required to keep up with all these frequency variants, uh, massive, passive antenna system going to, to massive antennas and, um, and, and hybrid solutions. And then we have architectural changes as well, not just on the radio, but on the baseband in terms of uh, moving the location of the compute and the type of hardware. And now also this shift towards uh, more from proprietary RAN towards open RAN and changes in business models. So overall, just if I look at the, the, the pace, the number of changes over the past two, three years, it's, it's basically, it's moving faster than what we saw in the first 20, 30 years of rolling out 1, 1G, 2G, 3G. And so, and so that, of course, is driven by a lot of activity on the demand side. Yes, mobile broadband right now is, is, is kind of driving that, the mobile broadband for consumers. But as the connectivity gets elevated and it gets proliferated through society into the enterprises, uh, using more private wireless and more fixed wireless access, I, I do believe that th there is, there is going to be an opportunity now, um, now more so than ever before, to kind of differentiate when it comes to connectivity, both for uh, incumbents and new entrants, and ultimately 
given all the, the plethora of, of activities that's happening here, I think that the, the likelihood of um, <laughs> making the, the wrong bets basically will, will, will increase. But at the same time, the, 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 the payoff uh, or the impact on the competitive dynamics when you make the right bets, they will be, they will be significant as well. So I think that's what, what's, what's really keeping it interesting right now. Oh yeah, I, it's it's fascinating to see the, the the different possibilities. And you mentioned their newcomers and the incumbents. Uh, how true is it that the five G RAN market is dominated by just three incumbent suppliers? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. Um, and 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 uh, yeah, I mean, we obviously track the market both from a market and a supplier perspective. And when you look at the the vendor shares uh, from a revenue perspective. I mean, it is uh, the, the top three suppliers are have a comprise a, basically more than eighty percent of the market. Uh, it's a, it's a fairly concentrated market with a with a poor track record of um, uh, poor track record in general with new entrants. So this this uh, market share uh, has been trending upward over time. It will vary a little bit from region to region. There's actually some regions where they, it's even more concentrated, more than moderately concentrated. I would say highly concentrated, in particularly in North America, in the U.S. and, and China. Uh, obviously, with all the, the expectation is with all of these new activities and opportunities that uh, there would be uh, that the share of some of these smaller players and new entrants will increase. But so far, we we basically have the top three more than eighty percent, the, the top five more than ninety percent, or more than ninety-five percent actually, and then you have kind of thirty to forty or so suppliers. Uh, that are that are uh, trying to capitalize on various opportunities. Some of them are, are, are focusing more on, a, I would say, more on, a, on the one end of the spectrum. You have more of like a niche, uh, and then some of them are trying to address all of those round segments we talked about, and then everything kind of in between. But but our estimates so far suggest that there have not been a significant change. Let's say uh, uh, in in the top five or the top three between 2019 and 2020. But of course, that's what keeps it interesting, and that's what we'll continue to monitor going forward. So, so you mentioned a few variables in, in the market there. And of course, one of the, the ones that's really come to the fore in the past year or so is Open RAN. Uh, is Open RAN having any kind of impact yet? Uh, and if not, when might it start to impact operator investments and vendor revenues in a meaningful way? Yeah, it's a good question. I think uh, the short answer is yes, it's, it's having an impact, especially on the market. Like I said, on the, on the market share, we have not seen a, a, obviously a significant impact just yet, but our estimates suggest that the open RAN market here, uh, including hardware firmware software for the, the, the radio and the baseband, uh, that approached basically 1% of the overall RAN market in 2020, accelerating actually a little bit faster than we had initially expected. Uh, so I think, um, that is, of course, uh, extremely important. But even more important is the fact that uh, I think the conversation has completely shifted over the past three to six months. Uh, I don't think it's a uh, so much a question anymore if if open rent is going to happen, and, and the conversation has shifted is now more more about the the scope and the timing. And uh, so, um, given given where we are sitting, uh, I think we are, uh, and, and based on recent events with. Uh, uh, increased rise of uh, policy discussions around, around open RAN, uh, operator commitment, and particularly what, what I am encouraged about is the the, the fact that uh, some of the we're seeing more of these so-called advanced radios because that's supposed to be a little more challenging to to handle with open RAN, and there's been a couple of new product announcements, as so they 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 are trying to catch up with the incumbents there. I think that's extremely encouraging. So we have a very good confidence level in our in the fact that in our assessment that open RAN will be a, account for a significant portion of the overall RAN market over the next uh, three to five years. Yeah, absolutely. It's looking that way. And even when, when the major operators want it and even some of the major incumbent suppliers believe it's going to start impacting their revenues uh, within a couple of years, it, it, it does seem a, a case of uh, when rather than if. Um, now, of course, Open RAN, one of the key trends at the moment, but another one and a real hot one is private wireless networks. Uh, are there any key trends in, in private wireless networks worth noting right now? And is this impacting the business opportunities of the technology suppliers? Yes, private wireless is a, 
it's definitely becoming a, a I would say a hot topic. I mean, the, 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 it has been around for a long time. Uh, obviously, we we have used private uh, systems, uh, but in, with various type of um, uh, configurations. And uh, but uh, for now, it definitely seems like it's heating up. I would say in terms of revenue, when we include all the various configurations, both using the mobile network and the local network, we, we do. Uh, we do see that it's starting to move above the noise. It's, uh, it is difficult, I would say, to kind of um, come up with uh, some common trends, uh, particularly when it comes to the local data network, because the, the applications uh, are, uh, are it, it, it varies quite a bit. And, and I'm not discouraged by that. I'm actually encouraged by that. So I have difficulty pointing to, uh, I guess the one thing I would say perhaps is that when we look at mission critical, that seems to be, uh, not not just it's not only a, a, obviously a major uh, driver of the existing uh, mobile network, but also when it comes to the dedicated local networks, a lot of trial activity, a lot of interest from various government ent entities like uh, Department of Defense and and Pentagon are, are, are talking about using um, using cellular technologies uh, for various uh, uh, use cases. I, I, we don't know exactly what it would be, but they talk about machine vision and and uh, virtual reality training and things like that. So that, that's, um, I think that's encouraging. Uh, in addition, I would, I would like to point out as well, there's a lot of discussion about the, the various architectural options when it comes to how to handle the RAN, like it's a shared RAN and not shared RAN, are you using private MAC, public MAC? I think it's important to remember that LTE actually has a lot of, LTE is gonna go a long way, there's a, there's a lot of, room left in the tank, so to speak. And we actually estimate that uh, LTE uh, private wireless RAN uh, or LTE, uh, I guess, accounted for the majority of the, uh, still accounts for the majority of the, I would say, of the private wireless RAN investment. Uh, that, that ratio, of course, will gradually evolve and, and probably be reversed in the next five years or so. But for now, uh, we, sh we shall not forget that LTE is a, uh, it will play a significant role here. Otherwise, more in general, when it comes to private wireless, I would just like to point out that it is, it is a very, it's different to, to forecast it than, than something else. It, it's very different because there's one thing to say, okay, we have, you know, 8 million cell sites around the world and we're going to try to convert them from, from 4G to 5G and you have a good reference. But when it comes to private wireless, it's actually, I believe the opportunity is, is fairly large and it's difficult. We don't have a good reference. Yes, we, we track, you know, Wi-Fi, enterprise, install base, et cetera, and that's helpful. But it's uh, that's only going to cover some. There's going to be some overlap there. So I, 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 in general, I believe Emra's law here that we 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 will likely overestimate the impact in the in uh, over the over the near term. But I, there's no doubt in my mind that we will. It's very difficult to completely uh, see what, what what as we as connectivity proliferate throughout society. I, I I I believe that we will underestimate the impact over the long term here. Yes, and as more spectrum becomes available and as more use cases become available, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how that develops and, and who ends up uh, running and managing these, these private networks. Um, yes. Uh, <clears throat> more in the traditional realm, um, of course, 5G has long been talked about uh, as, a, as a technology that can help to, to take broadband connectivity to, to places where it's difficult to get fixed networks. Um, so 5G fixed wireless access looks like an interesting broadband architecture option, but is this ever going to be anything other than just a very niche play? Uh, yes, uh, good, good question. I mean, fixed wireless is definitely interesting. Just comparing with private wireless, I, I basically would character because what's, what's interesting here is that the, the revenue actually uh, when we try to estimate fixed wireless access RAN and, and private wireless RAN, it's actually, at this juncture, they're actually fairly uh, on fairly similar wavelengths, I would say. But what's obviously private wireless is an extremely large opportunity, but we're very early stage. Um, fixed wireless access, I, I wouldn't call it as large of an opportunity. It is, a, it is a smaller opportunity, but it's more mature. I mean, the reality is more than half of the, well, nearly half of the operators, according to GSA, have uh, deployed some type of a, fixed wireless access network, it's already um, boosting the, the RAN market on our end. Uh, and uh, it, it is uh, part of the technology, part of the toolkit now for the broader, I would say broader broadband uh, toolkit, so to speak. For now, the focus is a lot on uh, using the underutilized resources on the mobile network to address the unconnected. 
And I think what's what's going to get uh, interesting and, and what we will learn more about is how to how well the technology will play out with with other markets, including the relatively served and the well served. And if we can help to improve the competitive dynamics there, but the general challenge here is that the mobile network has has good reach, uh, but because you're sharing it with your mobile users, it, the capacity will be somewhat limited. So you need to complement it with the with a dedicated network. The dedicated network has more capacity, but it doesn't have the same reach. So finding that the, the balance and and how to optimize the ROI, it, of course, we will learn more. But I mean, in general, we are we have fairly good visibility with the with the unconnected, and we believe. Uh, the fixed wireless access can, can definitely play, help there. And then, yeah, there's a little more uncertainty when it comes to the, the other opportunities. But overall, we, we see that the, the, the revenues are meaningful already. I don't think it's a game changer for the total RAN market, but the opportunity is, is, is definitely uh, significant. Uh, so thanks very much, Stefan. And finally, what are the main market shifts you expect to see in 2021 and 2022. For example, how will virtual RAN investments impact the market, if at all? Yeah, I think, uh, well, first of all, there will be a continued focus on, on, on um, uh, rolling out more 5G mobile broadband. I think we are, we're doing it right now in the sub one gig spectrum and, and I think uh, the upper mid band followed by uh, two gigahertz. I think that will continue to characterize the market. This shift towards uh, open RAN and VRAN I think it will continue. I don't expect the, uh, the 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 impact from a revenue perspective to be that material over the next one or two years. But I, I do expect more uh, more buy-in from the operators for particularly some of these advanced solutions, and that that that, that will be helpful to uh, improve the, uh, the the market in the uh, in a couple of years' time, maybe a little bit more of the near term. But and another important uh, I think event to follow as well will be the shift from, um, from NSA, from uh, NSA to, towards uh, standalone. Uh, I think that, you know, we always talk about uh, Open RAN helping to improve supply diversion, but I believe actually the, the shift towards standalone will play a significant role, uh, an extremely important role as well to, to provide the operators with a more uh, supplier options. So that's something we will be looking forward uh, and monitoring as well. Okay, excellent. A great point to end on. Stefan, fantastic to get your perspective on the 5G market. Thanks very much for, for joining us today and giving us your insights. Thank you. Thanks for having me.